Hello and welcome to this Ask the Expert session. My name is Dr. Scott Turner. Today I'll be providing answers to commonly asked questions about the use of biomarkers and other aspects of Alzheimer's disease management. Do you currently recommend measuring biomarkers other than amyloid and tau in cerebral spinal fluid? The best and most validated biomarkers for Alzheimer's in CSF are amyloid, especially a beta-42, and tau, or more specifically, phospho-tau-217 or phospho-tau-181. Other CSF biomarkers include other tau species, neurofilament light, or NFL for neurodegeneration, and glial fibrillary acidic protein, or GFAP, for inflammation. But these are more in the research realm currently. They may be heading towards the clinic in the near future. CSF alpha-synuclein is a marker of Lewy body pathology, and 1433 protein is a marker of CJD if these disorders are in the differential diagnosis. What information does amyloid PET provide that CSF cannot, and vice versa? While CSF analysis and amyloid PET both provide evidence of amyloid pathology, amyloid PET also provides regional or anatomic localization of the amyloid deposition in the brain. Amyloid PET scans can also be quantitated by the standard uptake value ratio, or SUVR, and a centiloid scale. Amyloid PET imaging was used to prove clearance of amyloid from the brain and thus target engagement by treatment with the antibodies, such as lecanemab and donanemab. CSF has the advantage, however, that multiple proteins can be assayed from one sample, such as amyloid, tau, and other proteins. Where do plasma biomarkers currently fit in the clinical practice for early Alzheimer's diagnosis? Plasma biomarkers are obviously more convenient and much less expensive than the validated gold standards, which are CSF protein analysis and amyloid PET imaging. The sensitivity and specificity of the plasma biomarkers continues to improve, especially for the A-beta-42 to A-beta-40 ratio, and the PTAU-217, or even better, the percent PTAU-217. The plasma tests are currently used as a screening tool in research and now increasingly in the clinic to determine who should go on to have a lumbar puncture or an amyloid PET scan. With further research, particularly in, in more diverse populations, the plasma biomarkers may supplant these more invasive and more expensive tests for a diagnosis of mild cognitive impairment or dementia due to Alzheimer's. Is there any difference in biomarker confirmation requirements for lecanemab versus donanemab? No, both lecanemab and donanemab are FDA approved for individuals with mild cognitive impairment or mild dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. For Medicare coverage, treatment with either antibody requires evidence of brain amyloid, either from CSF protein analysis or amyloid PET imaging. Should biomarker testing be performed serially for patients taking lecanemab or donanemab? Lecanemab requires treatment indefinitely, at least uh, current recommendations while donanemab treatment is discontinued once the amyloid PET scan becomes negative. Thus, serial PET, amyloid PET scans are recommended for those treated with donanemab. For the first follow-up scan, typically obtained at 12 to 18 months after beginning of treatment. Donanemab may be restarted if and when the amyloid PET scan becomes positive again, but this question remains to be answered. A possible alternative to serial amyloid PET or CSF analyses is monitoring by serial plasma testing, but this is also a work in progress. When should patients who do not experience adverse events stop taking an anti-amyloid antibody? As mentioned previously, lecanemab requires indefinite treatment, while donanemab is discontinued when the amyloid PET scan becomes negative. This is found in about 70% of individuals after 52 weeks of treatment with donanemab and in 80% of individuals after 76 weeks of treatment. Patients may also stop for other reasons, such as inconvenience, cost, or the development of adverse events, including aria or especially symptomatic aria. In the future, patients may also stop treatment when the dementia advances to the late stage, which is similar to our current practice with the older oral uh, drugs that are approved for Alzheimer's disease. How can communication between clinicians who treat patients receiving anti-amyloid monoclonal antibodies be improved? Communication between members of the clinical care team may be improved by sharing electronic medical record systems and or requiring a reliable historian or treatment partner to accompany the patient to all visits. This is especially important as the dementia gets more advanced. A medic alert card, necklace, or bracelet indicating treatment with an anti-amyloid antibody may also be useful 
particularly in emergency room situations or when traveling abroad when there's no access to electronic healthcare systems. Thank you for your time today. I hope you found this information helpful.